goodness, mercy, peace, and life shall follow me all the days of my life. You spirit of death and fear, go back to your sender. Go back to the pit of hell in the mighty name of Jesus. Roka bo shanda balaba. Le broka bo soka bayandali. Roma saka yanda lebori. Mayanda balebo ye derea. Roka ba 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 le. In Jesus' name we pray. Any aspect of my life open to death and destruction. Oh God, fill it by your spirit. Pray in the name of Jesus. Any aspect of my life that is open to death and destruction. Oh Lord, fill it by your spirit. Fill me by your spirit. Fill me by your spirit. Fill me by your spirit. Any aspect of my life, any part of my body that is open to death and destruction, let it be filled with the life of God. Let it be filled with the spirit of God. Let it be filled with the quickening power of God. Let it be filled with the covenant of his mercy. In the mighty name of Jesus. Roka bashanda balabare. Makore kebo sokabaya. Ronka bayanda lebori, bore ke bosso kabaya, le proko bosso kabaya, le broka bosso kabayanda, makaya nda bale bore bosso, ye ke ye nele bosso kabaya, makore ke bosso liyam, roka ba 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 bale, reke bosso nda bale, mo reke bosso kobori. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh Lord, my God. Lord my God, remember your promise. Remember your promise. Keep, me Keep me from the destroyer. Is that the way you will pray? Malebo Sanda Valebori. Oh Lord, my God, remember your promise. Keep me from the destroyer. In the mighty name of Jesus. Send destroyer away from me by the power in your blood. Keep me from the destroyer that want to destroy my life, that want to destroy my destiny, that want to cut me short, that want to destroy my calling, that want to destroy my ministry. Keep me from them. Deliver me from them. Deliver me from the destroyer. Who wants to destroy me? In the mighty name of Jesus. Deliver me speedily. Deliver me speedily. Deliver me speedily. In the mighty name of Jesus. Roka ba shanda ba lebru. Roka ba 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 ba. Ma yendele bo sokoburi. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Every stubborn spirit, Every spirit pursuing me, me around, your time is all. Be, Be destroyed. Open your mouth and pray. You monitoring spirit, stubborn spirit, monitoring me around, trailing me around. Your time is up. Be destroyed. Your time is up. Be destroyed. In the mighty name of Jesus. You monetary spirit. You strange forces. You disobedient spirit. Trailing me around. Your time is up. Be destroyed. Your time is up. Be destroyed. Your time is up. Be destroyed. 
in the name of Jesus. Rekaba sakaya nali. Rekabo shederi. Thank you for fighting my battle for me. Jehovah Olubeja. Thank you for fighting my battle for me. Jehovah Olubeja. Thank you for fighting my battle for me. Jehovah Olubeja. Thank you for fighting my battle for me. Jehovah Olubeja. Thank you for fighting my battle for me. Jehovah Olubeja. Malebo Shakayanda. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's take that song so fast. Thank you for fighting my battle for me. me. Jehovah Olubeja. Thank you for fighting my battle for me. Jehovah Olubeja. Thank you. For me. Over my adversary. And save me from destruction. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Arise, O Lord. Take vengeance for me. Over my adversary. And save me from destruction. In the name of Jesus. Arise and take vengeance for me. Arise, O Lord, and take vengeance for me and save me for destruction. In the name of Jesus, take vengeance over my adversary. Take vengeance for me. Take vengeance for me. Take vengeance for me over my adversary. In the name of Jesus, save me from destruction. In the name of Jesus, take vengeance for me and save me from destruction. In the name of Jesus. I give you praise, O Lord. I give you worship, O Lord. I give you honor, O Lord. In the name of Jesus. Rekaba seke yende rekebo shandalia. Labroba sakaya naleburi. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Holy Spirit, here we are. We are ready to take the role you have apportioned to each one. And we are ready to receive all that you plan to do in our lives. We ask, oh God, there shall be no distraction in Jesus' name. Amen. We ask that your power will move on in that in Jesus' name. Amen. We plead the blood of Jesus over this whole assembly online, on ground. And we banish every strange spirit. Amen. So that the word of God will go speedily to accomplish great things for us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory be to your name. 
In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. You may be seated in God's presence. Online, you are welcome. We thank you for welcoming us into the cool of your home. As we join us and go on with us, whatever the Lord is doing amidst us, you are going to be partaker in the name of Jesus. Mark chapter 14, that's where we're taking our test from. Mark chapter 14. I like to read from verse 3 to 9. Mark 14, 3. The title of today's ministration is Praising God with Gift and Service. Praising God with Gift and Service. Praising God with Gift and Service. And being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meal, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spinach, very precious. And she broke the box and poured it on his head. That's on Jesus' head. And there was some that had indignation within themselves and said, Why was this waste of the ointment made? For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and have been given to the poor. And they murmured against her. And Jesus said, let her alone. Somebody here today, I speak, let her go. Yeah. Why trouble you are? She has wrought a good work on me. For you have the poor with you always. And whensoever you will, you may do to them good. But me, you have not always. She has done what she could. She's come up for time to anoint my body to the burial. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she has done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. Somebody praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't forget, we are talking about praising God with gift and service. Over time, we see people want to appreciate God. The best way they know is, anytime God does anything good, they rejoice, they dance. Some of them will come around, you know, share testimonies and all that. That is common to us in the church. But you see, there is another level of appreciating the work of God in our lives and that is what that passage has simply showed us. There is a portion of the Bible that tells us that look, this woman felt that her sin was too much that Jesus Christ forgave her and that she cannot but do something beyond her power to show appreciation to God. Why do many of us withdraw ourselves from celebrating God's goodness in our lives. Traditionally, we follow the deeds of others. We believe once you shout hallelujah and praise God and thank you, Jesus, that should be the end of whatever God has done. But here, the scripture is showing us the importance of using your gifts to say thank you. The importance of using gifts to say thank you to God. A lot of teaching have gone over given gifts in the house of God that we have overlooked the reason and the motive, scriptural motive, that should be attached to giving of gifts to, you know, just wanting to have more. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, president, shaking together and all that. That's what many of us want to do. But we have forgotten that in a mode of worship, you can look for gifts around you to give unto God. And I think at this point, your gift has an indelible operation in the things of the kingdom than just coming out to say, Ebami Yulua Logo, and it ends there. That's why when you get to some big, big churches, Orthodox churches, you will see many of them as a result of the good pleasure of God upon themselves. They will bring cheers, they will bring edifices, 
into the house of God as gift. But you see, we Pentecostal, we believe that God does not need those things. All he needs is hallelujah. When I tell you, some people shout hallelujah here, the next second they forgot what they are shouting hallelujah for. That is why people like Mary Magdalene here, because she felt God has done something so great for her, that she doesn't just need to shout hallelujah and give testimony and forget it like that. That she has to go and attach what God has done for her with a manifestation of precious gifts that she has. Don't forget the Bible says that that precious ointment is worth more than a year's salary. And how do you know the implication? You have never seen somebody who came and said, thank you Jesus. For what you have done for me and the next minute the devil is crazy like this one immediately satan saw how she has touched the very soft part of the lord everybody there took indignation everybody there was touched how do you know what touched the devil you see him react when you do what touched him Beloved, let me tell you, anytime you claim to be having sacrifice and you don't feel any implication of it, it is not touching anything. But when you do something that has a great implication and so immediate and so speedy, oh, you must have touched an important part of God, God Almighty in your life and the kingdom of God as well as the kingdom of the devil. The Bible says, every one of them went into indignation within themselves. When you study this version, this scripture in other versions, in other synoptic, there was a place that even Peter was found in indignation. From the head of the disciples to the least, every one of them were you know, they became touched because the adversary has been touched. Every one of them, some out of ignorance, some felt we have never been doing this. What are you introducing? After all, the master have told us that we should remember the poor. Why don't we sell this and give to the poor? As some people say in the church today, they say, well, if it is the poor, the church should go after the poor and be looking for the poor, you know, to do things for. They forgot that it is only the mercy of God that can save the poor. No matter what you give to the poor, if it's not born again, you have wasted your resources. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 6 verse 10, it said, do good to the old people, but especially to the people of the house of God. So believers are exemption. They are preferred above any kind of people when you are doing it. Look at this one. It was doing it directly to the Lord Jesus. I don't know. The disciples were there. Thank God for Peter who led one of his sheep for Jesus to preach. But we were not told that he gave Jesus that sheep. Yes. I believe that after he has finished preaching that day, Jesus has uh, um, asked him to get many fish. And then after that, the sheep and the fish went with Peter and with his household. But this woman, all her life savings was brought. And publicly too, he broke that box and anointed Jesus. Appreciating him with the gifts she could afford. I've had people say to me, he said, my first one million naira must go to God. I said, why do you want to do that? He said, well, I have never seen anything that God has not done for me. He said, which of them does not deserve my giving all? Is it my salvation or my healing or my preservation or victory over the enemy? He said, that is why I have dedicated 
my first one million unto God. You see, that is worshipping God with your gift. I think the church has to come back to that level again. So as not to belittle the kindness and the goodness of God in our lives. Many of us have been taking things for granted. I'm very sure the apostles, what really happened to them was, they have been with Jesus. They have never thought that they can celebrate Jesus that way. So when they saw somebody who is just among the crowd do that, something must have touched them inside and said, look, we are fumble. This man is paying so much on our lives, but we have never thought any good thing, any great thing like this. It is easy to overlook the goodness of God when you are practicing familiarity. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. When God will have expected you to use the connection you have with the anointing to celebrate God, you will be thinking, well, maybe we are doing the work of God together. All of us are coming to church. All of us are working team member. All of us are this and that. When God will have preferred you to do a one-time sacrifice that the whole world will never forget on your behalf. We look little before ourselves. The devil makes it so easy for us to think. Once we say thank you Lord, that's the end of everything. But it doesn't make us realize that if evil happen, just forget it. It's not always easy. There will be people looking and saying, why this? Why that? People will lose courage. People will lose joy, lose happiness. Everybody will be going soberly and all that. We thank God evil does not happen in our congregation. And it shall not happen in Jesus' name. Amen. But when it is good that happens, like somebody who has been delayed, has a baby, another person who is trusting in God for a car, just got one, another person who wants to marry, just got married, and things like that. It has been a habit among children of God to just overlook it by saying, hallelujah. In fact, as a matter of fact, there are many times when we want people to even celebrate us. Because in the testimony that such people give, you see that the glory is not going to God, it's going to themselves. They tell us how many fasting they did. They tell us how many days they did not eat. They tell us how many months they cried. They tell us how many, you know, people rose up to help them. At the end of the day, they now say, well, we thank Jesus. Jesus has done it. That glory is not for Jesus. That glory is for ourselves. And that is a usual practice among us children of God. Because the devil has been able to close our eyes to more important things. See, when all of them began to show indignation and they began to murmur, the, the, the event so convicted them even those who thought they are at the forefront of the faith, people like Peter, John, James, they were not spared. If it is just Judas Iscariot that is indicted, we will have said maybe it's, a, it's somebody, it's just normal. But here, the best of the disciples were touched to the point that they were not ready to listen to the teaching of Jesus anymore. What were they doing? The Bible says, and they murmured against her. They began to murmur against her. And I think at this point I need to tell somebody that the next time God does you good, don't listen to murmuring. Don't let anybody, don't let anybody suppress your intention. You want to bless the Lord with gifts. We see people bless the Lord with car. You don't need to ask, will God ride a car? We see people bless the Lord with a house. About two months ago, I met a man who was telling my wife beside me that three members of the church 
gathered themselves together and built for their pastor a, a duplex. And he was trying to describe the place to my wife, but we couldn't get the place. Three members of the church. How come they cooperated to that level? And all that. And somebody is listening to me now. You are a member of the church. You see the goodness of God in your life. Maybe God is pointing to something that is a gift in your hand. And say, leave it for me. So that I can create an indelible record. In the record of your life. That this is what you give in celebrating what I give to you. But you see, because of the kind of operations we are doing. And our structure in churches. We have so much, you know, become so contemporary, sophisticated that we feel that once you come out and say, praise the Lord with me, that should be the end. No, you can use gifts to praise God. Many times, those who do that, you don't even see them come out to say anything. But you, it is good that you combine them together. Mary came publicly. She broke the ointment publicly. They saw it. At the same time, he wasted it on Jesus. So it's not something that you think if you are doing that openly, God will not accept you. As a matter of fact, he allowed Jesus to really know what is in the mind of the people. I've been a pastor for a while. And I shared with us one time, a member of the church brought, for the first time in my life, I've never collected such an amount of offering. The lady brought 5,000 naira in an envelope. And I tell you, we were so broke, but people who are poor in the church are enjoying. Because all the money of the church we used to buy things for them. But we would not touch the same source. So we were broke. And because Jesus Christ is always faithful to his servant, he touched that lady. And the lady got the job she got through us. So quickly rushed back after service and brought 5,000. I don't know. Maybe she showed it to another member one of the members that took the lion's share of the titan offering, which we give to members. And she exclaimed and asked the lady, where are you coming from? And the lady said, I'm coming from my pastor. So what did you go to do? I told you I wanted to go and give him an offering. She asked, the lady said 5,000. He said, ah! Did he collect it? At that point, the Holy Spirit struck her. Her lips began to shake and vibrate. Her hands joined and her leg now joined. Right on the spot. Why did God decide to do that? Why didn't God overlook her ignorance? That's not an ignorance. It's a show of wickedness. There are people that are wicked against God. There are people that don't want anything of God to prosper. There are people who don't want servants of God to make it. There are people who don't want children of God to survive. There are people who want everything for themselves and nothing for any other person. We are so many in the world like that. Who don't carry the spirit of God. Hallelujah somebody. Hallelujah. When you get to places of work. The people you put there. They look at you as if you should re return everything you are making in that place of work. And give it to him. Some workers will be censoring the amount of money the company is making. And that make their head to turn. And they stop doing their own work. It happened in the Bible. Jesus Christ agreed to give one pain to all the workers. And he took some in the morning, some in the noon, some in the evening. 
When he wanted to pay them back, those who started working the money felt he's owing them more than one pence. And Jesus Christ has to give them the proverb. He says, what is really troubling you? Did we not agree for one pence? The problem is they don't want others to prosper. If you are here, you are listening to me. Anytime somebody around you is prospering, gives you problem. I ask that God will give you power to know that that's an error in your life that must be destroyed. Because life is not about you alone. Life is sweeter when everyone around you is making it and doing good. And those child servants of God that you see, who begin to, you know, witness all the goodness of God here and there, and they are suffering underneath. They are not angels. They are not angels. They rejoice at people's joy. Why they are suffering the same suffering inside. They will never come and report to anybody. What I'm saying to you, Mary caught the vision. And I'm speaking to somebody. You will cut the vision of your own life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. They continue to murmur. Murmur, 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 murmur. Verse number six. Until Jesus Christ caught them. And the first thing Jesus says, let her alone. Ephesile. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? In your church today, if you see somebody who gives a brand new car to the church, what is your comment over such people? If you see somebody who gives scholarship to the child of your pastor, how do you feel around him? Majority of people don't love such people. They castigate them because the devil will want them to join the rest who don't have feelings for the things of God. There are, I tell you, brethren, there are people in the church who don't have good feelings toward the things of God. All they are looking for is themselves. All they are looking for is themselves. They lack job for several years. The pastor is praying with them, fasting with them. Eventually, God opened the door. They are the ones who will never come to church to say thank you. This and every look. Let's use it to do something in the house of God. That's not the way our fathers do it. As a matter of fact, the first salary of such job, they bring to the house of God as first fruits. There are people in the church today who don't believe in first fruits. He waited on the Lord. He got the attention of the pastor, the leaders of the church. They were praying for him as if all life hands with him. As if he's the only one that is jobless. Everybody will turn out of God looking for appointments here and there for himself alone. And eventually God will have mercy. Just because of his church. God will say, well, my, the voice of my people are so much on me. Let me answer him. Even though he may not deserve it. And God will give him that job. Two, three years after he has started the job, he will never bring an envelope to that God. He will never come and do anything in that church to assist that church. He will never do anything to appreciate the anointing that God has sent into that ministry. There will never be anything traceable to him. Even the wall clock, the bulb, the light bulbs, the fuel in the generator, Nothing is attacked to him, coming from him. You will not live a useless life. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And you are looking at him and I, And he's looking at you as if, well, I have thanked my God. Why didn't you call on your God alone? Why do you have to tell anybody when you are suffering? That God you have thanked in the corner of your room. Why didn't you just tell him that you need a job and keep quiet there? Why did you take that problem to the church? Why did you go to the pastor and tell him you are looking for a job? When you are trying to gather prayer, band people together and pray for you consistently, 
Why did you tell them it's not necessary? Beloved, let's understand some deep things of God. On no account in the scripture do I see Jesus so answering a people so sharply. Many times Jesus Christ answer issues that has to do with disciple slowly. He will wait and get them to a private place and he will now say, do you understand what I did the other time? And he will begin the teaching. This one, Jesus could not wait. He said, Let, leave her alone. That is to say, you are so selfish. That is to say, you are not thoughtful enough. That is to say, you are men and women that lack understanding. That is to say, you have taken too, too far. That is to say, you are blind to reality. You have never offered me a bottle of Coke. And this woman came with the most precious thing in her life and broke it in your presence. God intentionally brought that woman to do it publicly so that the best among them, even Peter, his inner thought was exposed. What are you thinking about using your gift for God? Gone are the days when our fathers will say, God, in that church, I'm going to buy a bus for the work of God. In that church, I'm going to build parishes for that church. I listened to testimony of a brother online. This attack just came to him and the wife was carrying him from one hospital to the other and all that. And the church also rose up to pray for them. Eventually, after spending millions of naira, he got okay. The man of God prayed for him. He became stable. stable. And looking at it, he was saying, well, let's, let me look at the thing. Maybe he just left me for one month. One month, it doesn't come. Three months, it doesn't come. One year, it doesn't come. Immediately, it was one year. He came to the children of God, shared the testimony, and told them. said, if I am going to live up to 70 I will build nothing less than five parishes single-handedly for this church. And as at the time he was sharing the testimony, they were playing it. He said he has built three. Are those not children of God? Pentecostalism does not take appreciation from us. And we don't have to do giving because we want to have back all the time. Giving can be to praise God. We should look at that and forget about wanting more. Even though God is not going to stop what is yours. But that shouldn't always be our motive all the time. I'm giving so that I can receive. I contribute money to buy a car for my pastor so that somebody also will give me a car. That's a law of retribution. That's sowing and reaping. But much more than that, Mary Magdalene was not anointing Jesus because he wants a husband that looks like Jesus. No. Jesus Christ said, her love for me was so much because she felt the sin of her life that I forgave him was so much also. Appreciation, gratitude, thanksgiving. May that spirit enter you and me. In the name of Jesus Christ. Don't let us all sleep and turn one side. I am giving because I want somebody to give to me. What if somebody doesn't give to you? You stop giving. That is just part of the deal. 
That's not all it contains. You give to thank God. Turn to your neighbor and say, give to thank God. That's not profound enough. Look at him in the face. Number one, if that is your motive, you will give with joy. Number two, if that is your motive, you will give the best. Number three, if that is your motive, you will always give because he always do you good. Number four, if that is your motive, you will know you are giving to God and not to man. Because you don't have to lay ass with any man to ask what you can do to appreciate God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus said, leave her alone. You religious fanatics. You walk with me every day. If I go on 21 days fasting, you are the first person I'm going to pour the oil on. You are the first set of people that will receive the teaching from my mouth. You are the first set of people I am praying for every day. You are the one I open my shirt so that you can see my inward parts and understand me. I go teaching you day and night with my life. Am I not responsible for my privacy? Don't I have a right for my privacy? But because of the gospel, I open myself up. My door is open. You come in daily, you come in night by night, you enter anywhere. Even the privacy of my matrimonial room, you enter. And I take it that God, that is what I'm called for. Because you have said, I am the epistle for your people. Has he ever occurred to you that for all these inconveniences and for all the miracle I'm enjoying in my home, what are we going to do for that church? What are we going to do for that fellowship? What are we going to do for the anointed there? Praise the name of Jesus. As you are seated, I want you to think. In what way have you used any gifts to appreciate God in your life? Something precious to you. You just lay it down and say, yes, God has been so good to me, I'm laying this down. In what way have you thought and change your mind from the general contribution and say, Lo, my God deserves more than this. Is the one that called me the living. If he is not upholding my life, I won't be among these people. If he didn't show up in that day, I would have been somewhere else. Hallelujah. 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 Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why do you trouble her? Can you see? The people are troubling her. The Jeshas will say, O she, O Jalure she. He doesn't know how to do good, and he will not allow those who are ready to do good to do it. Are you part of that? Look at how Jesus Christ described me, just like that adage. You say, why are you troubling her? Why do you trouble her? What are you talking? Do you know the implication of what you are saying? You have never bought a coconut or a cup of gari from your house for us to share it, to celebrate here. As a matter of fact, even on the, on the naming ceremony of some members, they will not make provision for their church members. And then their family members will be you know, accusing the church member. They will be accusing. And because the church members are decent people, many of them will withdraw. That lady has forgotten. 
Every week she comes to church to be prayed for, her water to be blessed. When she wants to deliver, the members are there interceding in the spirit. She will forget everything. It's not my mother-in-law that matters. Why do you trouble her? Do you want everybody to become forgetful as you are? And why does he find it so easy? She found it so easy because she believes that on the day she will be bringing the baby to church for dedication that she will share testimony. Many of us need to repent. Say I will repent. Say I will repent. Appreciate God with your gift. In the Old Testament, when the ox is taken to do farming, they will never muzzle the mouth of the ox. They will remove Ijanu from the mouth so that it can open. And as he's doing the cultivation, he will be eating. Nobody has raised anybody to be destroyed. Nobody has raised anybody to be killed. The church is not to be, to be oppressed. The church is not to be introduced in the world as hungry people. Praise the name of Jesus. If Jesus Christ took control of your life in the church, celebrate Jesus in that church. Leave a mark, leave a gift. Do something glorious. I have found many times that mommy has to keep sending to people and say, the way you treated the members, I don't like it. Because the point is this. A lot of us don't know that the, 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 the church is the first point of intercession for your success. Hear me, some people wouldn't have survived in life except that he joined that church. Jesus Christ says, the prince of this world has come to me and has found nothing in me. Can you say that? You that is dating another girl and planning another wedding. If God was to judge you, will you live and see today? But the covenant of the church, the fellowship of the church, the peace of the church that you belong, God is working on it day and night to show you mercy that you don't deserve. So when you have your joy, what is your attitude to that church? What is your attitude to that fellowship? What is your attitude to the leaders? If they are contributing to the leader, you are the one who will be dictating for them that that is too much, that's too much. Just like the disciple did. It's too much. It's too much. What is too much in your eyes for your God? What is too much in your eyes for the one who preserved your life? What is too much for your, for your God who saved you and gave you gift of salvation? Are you better than those who are stripping on online? Many of them are more beautiful. What is much for your God? The God of the ministry you enter and things turn around for you. What is more? Now, if it is not more, what have you done in that ministry that will always point to the miracle, points to the goodness, points to the mercy of God in your life? Don't trouble her anymore. As many of you that walk in this doctrine, you shall no longer be troubled. Amen. I was told of a woman in my mother church. That woman, as at the time, I was giving her testimony. 
every pastor ordained in that ministry, she buys a car for them. And nobody knows. She won, the pastor must not announce it. A woman. What are we chasing today? Everybody is. And when the miracle comes, hardly will you see it on them. Majority of them, you will never see it. In fact, some will even go to the extent that if I pay tithes, they will suspect my breakthrough has come. So they will keep tight. We don't have to be children of the devil. We don't have to be ungrateful set of people. We should be praiseful. We should be thankful. We should be grateful. All the time. For every little kindness of God. We should show appreciation to him. We should live in such a manner that if she asks for my coat this afternoon, I promise I will not take it home. By the grace of ministry, I can recollect there was a day, mommy just showed sold Agbada for me. Very expensive. And I brought it to church. And as I was ministering, the Holy Spirit came on me. Removed that garment and put it on somebody who was to go for operation. And the operation, I've never had that in my life. The operation that should maximum time for the operation was given before they started. He said 40 minutes. It lasted more than three hours. But he demanded that they took everything inside that woman, place it on the table, and begin to arrange it like computer. Under anesthesia. If I'm lying, the person should be here. To be saying, Pastor is lying. They put everything, intestine, womb, everything on the table. They forgot her where she was. Half dead, half living. And they were arranging the thing. They called the consultants. On a usual practice. Hallelujah. <laughs> On a usual practice, they will have abandoned that case. Once it's exceeding 40 minutes, abandon it. Not in Shokuni Boji. Moye. But you read Dr. Conto to my jacket, what that is, Jade Tari. Who is the husband? Who is the husband? Oh, you would you, eh? I'm the one, sir. I'm the one, sir. Okay. We are very sorry. We try all our best. And, uh... But because of the covenant, because of the power, because of the presence of God, they had to call home for more specialized doctors, greater consultants with proven records. They gather themselves in few minutes. Hold up, relief to Anesthesia don't fool any in laps. Nobody genie time here, that will be the end. And God stood with them. In my house, by his grace, the Holy Spirit was discussing with me at that time. And I was able to see some of the secrets that were going on in that place. The following day, I told the woman, I said, this is what I saw. He said, she said I saw it at the entrance of the hospital. When great things happen for you, do great things. Let great things happen for God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Let great things happen for his people. Let great things happen for his servant. Let great things happen for that fellowship. Don't trivialize the blessing of the Lord. 
And thank God for that sister. After they did it and did it, he sew up everything. When it's time, he opened her eyes. He smiled. We rushed there in the morning. Let's come and see. I shake a kere in Maureen Nule. But seriously, she stood up to come and greet us. This was the lady that the last service we did before she went for the operation. I removed her upper garment and I put on her by the leading of the Holy Spirit. God who knew that that body, they have finished it, used that mantle to bring the body together. Now, do, do you expect the pastor to still be wearing that kind of thing? I'm just citing the example. The lady that this one happened for, good woman. But we have seen many, many, many ungrateful people who rather that doing that, they will even be finding fault with church. Forgetting the labor of the people of God over there. Some of them will go with their husband who don't know anything. Some of them will, will go with their parents who are critics from the beginning. I won't be taunting. They will make comments and you believe them. Let's take a seat. Talk to your neighbor. Leave him alone. Let him serve God. Let him praise God with his gift. This one message that I didn't practice to come and preach. I waited on the Lord for more than one week. All I was hearing is go there, I will speak through you. And I've never seen it preached like this before in my life. Since I've entered the church. Using your gifts to praise God. The church has looked away from that. Hallelujah. 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 We don't have to be lost because we have good shepherd. We don't have to copy wrong things. We should get back to the basics. About two months ago, I went to one Anglican church. That's my father's church. Followed there. My uncle was being, was doing, they are doing funeral for my uncle. And I saw the first set of chairs and table. You see the names of those who put it there. How many chairs have you bought into this house? When are you going to wait to do it? Until somebody come here and say, church, let us, everybody, contribute by 5,000 want to buy chair. Why are you waiting for anybody? Did God wait for anybody to do you good? I'm just citing few, few examples. The deeper part is in your heart and it's in my heart. We know it. The church leader called my cousin. He said, you have done so much. Gave them more than one million. And they are still saying, you have to tell us what we are going to do. Our keyboard has spoiled. And we want to repair it for 350000 So, try and tell us what you will do. In Pentecostal churches, 
everybody is upon the pastorate. They weigh pastors down because of wrong things they are hearing in the world. The world has got nothing to feed you about the church of the living God. There are so many members who are coming for deliverance. Say, get here by 8 a.m. We don't have a full time pastor. Everybody is working to survive, but we are willing to help you. Get there by 8 o'clock. And it goes back. <laughs> when it is tonight, now be doing it. Who do you want, Papa? Papa is not here. The pastor that should pray for you has left for his own work. So as she's concerned, that church is not good. So, pastor who wants to pray for you that has taken time in a space of work for 30 minutes, we wait so that they can sack him. And after they sack him, you get your blessing. The way you have been acting before, that's the way you will act. You will never ask, Pastor, why are you around at this time? Praise the name of Jesus. Worship the Lord with your body. Worship the Lord with Worship the Lord with your Worship the Lord with your And look at what Jesus said He said She has done a good work She has wrought a good work May my life and your life Always be good work on God she has done me good. Ah, I want God to say that to you. Omoye, ni first future. Ah, ocean country for me. I mean, if you don't read this scripture, you will follow those who say God doesn't expect anything from anybody. Because people, people can talk what is not scriptural, and you will digest it like that. And they become poison in your mind. Look at what Jesus said. She has wrought good work on me. Ten lepers were cleansed. And only one went back to Jesus. The first thing Jesus said was, where are the nine? For those of you who don't know the scripture, who will say, I don't obey anything. Why did Jesus ask, where are the nine? Ten were claimed. Where, where, why, where are the nine? That shows that the Lord was expecting all the ten to come back and say, thank you, Lord, just that that one person did. And unfortunately, it was one out of ten that received Health. The other received healing, but this man received wholeness. Wholeness is different from healing. Healing does not prevent you from falling sick again. But when you are made whole, no matter any attempt against your body, affliction will not rise the second time. I think somebody will say it louder. In it. Faith brought the healing. Appreciation bought the wholeness. The church should dare to come to the line of appreciation. Appreciating the labor of God over your life. What are you only be more like you? You be a you be keta. Oh, Reti Bong Cotton Besso. To sing a cotton, be one little Lua Tony, a empty of Amy Fisori, a cocotin moyaga. Anna, did your mark or be a 
to ni e ba mi e ba e je ko wa pelu wo li eyi ni oro ebo susun mi this is my vow there was a woman like that waited on the lord and it was around that time the school of this and jokingly i just said this boy that god gave us must start this school it was tie she used to close that chapter and god of heaven will be saying sorry the unbeliever when they go to babalawo even though those ones don't give them children yet they will never do anything without involving that man ejo bonifagni ko lo o ko te je baba yen ko ko so omo yi o nso mo lasun o a ti gba ko lo school se kondo ni o se ani mo gbo baba fa mo gbo baba fa n to so lo de ma se kondo but when you come to the house of god you can't hear that the man of god will still even be celebrating the baby and praying for the baby but i tell you there is a place where god is desiring a gift he said don't trouble her she has done a great work on me he said where are the nine ten people received this blessing only one came back where are the nine it is when you don't know the scripture that you'll be acting dear 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 and he began to tell them the difference in using gift to praise god and in using gift for kabu kabu and uh, betting and gambling anybody hearing me here you do bitcoin or what did they call it bet niger and all that i will talk to you before the end of the service one man came to your state 12 years ago from the eastern part of the country it was when it was two months for him to travel back to the east and settle down after much prayer and trouble of his wife that he had our radio program and came to this church we took up his case ministering every day ministering every day ministering every day you know what this man makes money but gambling that's his number one sport he will gamble after the whole day work if he has made 8000 he will gamble 10000 gambling on credit for 12 years everything they achieve in his family it was through his wife a woman broke down weeping pastor you are there you know the case now was the one attached to him go and treat him it was, it was a serious case now he's old they have to go back home daddy do you know I don't have any property to take home I just have to go I said if you believe you can stay and make it he said daddy you have tried your best just be praying for me be going so for me he abandoned that to 2,000 to fishing can give this in church. To ba un wo kan ye gan lasan. Agbara de ba pe a a. Mi mo sele mi o ni lorun apadi. Mi o ni se kini. When 
Ezekiah became king, one of the first things he did was to go and repair the house of God. Total refurbishing and repair. Oh, that king did not know that in the course of his rulership, he was going to have an attack of sickness to kill him prematurely. Did they go open my heart to that? Ah, I said, I should When the greatest prophet of that time came and said, Ezekiah, you will die. Ezekiah did not argue with him. The Bible says he took his garments and he went into the house of God. The house he spent all his life to rebuild and repair. The house where Yahweh dwell. The house where the ark of God dwell. Which anybody will have thought this is not necessary. We need to improve our trade relation. We need to improve our export this. We need to improve our budgeting. We need to improve our market women. We need to give money to the poor. We need that man knew what he should do. He went to rebuild the house of God. And that was the house that became a refuge for him. When the declaration of death came. And he said, I was imagining him that day. Standing in the house he repaired. And recording what God said to Solomon. Who first built that house. Before it was vandalized. And he says, I'm ready to do more. Oh God. I can't do this and I'll be taken out of it. No. 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 Who ni kole fellow me be? Who ni god ba jara fo elo mi lati je? Ah ah Oluwa, yeah man. In this house is my salvation. And before he said two sentences, the Lord went to the greatest prophet. They go back to him. I will not die. Oba jo mo lo lo nbi in time yen. Gbogbo wo tori. O je campaign lo fi se. O je form lo lo nfo wo gba. Mo ni basasi. Awon to ta form fun so ma ri. O wo form. Hm? The day he went to the house of God, God said, Yes, yes. Ah, what will repair lay in Toto? Ah, Nemo, hello, what bad do you to call you? That was it. The Lord will marry. I'm going to say, Yes. 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 You are going to joke on only what my expect. Your money, they got that to two thousand for Papa. They got that three thousand. They got what? 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 What's that rubbish? What's that? Use your gifts to worship God. Nobody is there when the devil say he will destroy you. When God Almighty came for your rescue. Serve that God who didn't go go wo ko go bi ko gba un kon lo wo mi ko to ba mi se o ko to ba mi se o e gba un kon lo wo mi ko go wo ko
Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Mayendele ba kostole kabozo kabaya. Lambro kabo kostele ke yenduria. Nayandole kabo kashanda balala. Malaba kostele kaboye. Lembro kabo kostole kabo shanda ye. Yendele boko rika seki, bako yendele kabo kusuma. Makaya na baliburia. How many people are here? God did some mighty miracle in your life that you know you can never forget the rest of your life. Raise it up and keep it up. I don't mean before you join this church, when you join this church. Please don't pretend and don't copy anybody. God performed mighty miracle in your life. Period, you join this commission. You know, I can never lie. I waited on the Lord for one week for a message to preach. But my wife knew when it comes like that, we don't tamper with things of God. Very early in the morning, I saw that every one of us who are in that position will need to come and associate that goodness with a gift in the house of God. I was looking at myself. I said, God, you know, I don't have anything. And immediately, my heart began to, the light was searching, searching, until I saw something. Said, Let that be your own. Let everyone bring something that you can always say, as I was appreciating God, I remember he led me and I took a pair of shoes to dedicate that thing. I took a fan to dedicate that. I bought a generator to dedicate that. I bought a bus to dedicate that. I went to market. I bought a suit to dedicate that. Don't let the devil 
confuse you. God is not going to wear your suit. As Jesus Christ was not looking for anointing from man. But when that lady anointed him, he did not cast her away. And people that wanted to send her away, he rebuked them. And I'm going to read what the scripture wrote about that woman. Maybe in another teaching, you will know what that statement really means for that woman the rest of her life. She has done what she could. She has come aforehand to anoint my body to the burial. That is, she got the revelation of Christ's death and burial ahead of anybody. God made a reservoir of God's greatest plan the revelation in that age verily I say unto you wheresoever the gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world tell me where all over the world now is the gospel not preached Also, this that she has done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. And long after she has died, God gave her a covenant that her name will never be blotted out in the history of Christianity. When you come to Bible study, you see the mystery of that. Because she attached a gift. To the blessing of God. To the testimony of God. I was there when a man said. Oh Lord. I am building a house on a two. Two parcel of land. As I was planning with the architect. I heard the spirit says, build on one and give the other one to me. I want to bring my house close to your house. I have seen family. And the Lord said, out of that four cars, bring one to my house. I need it. The spirit of the end time is seriously working against the church. And even sons, proper daughters are not spared. That's why you must move close to people of revelation. That's why you must be close to prophetic declarations. Some people will say, I don't have anything to give. But you have a gift that you can give. The prophet told that woman, what is in your house? Don't stop talking nonsense. Don't have anything. Don't have anything. You want to take my child. Say, what's in your house? And at that point, she kept quiet. Many of us, the way we dodge before men, that's the way we keep dodging before God. But God brought this ministration to you. I don't think he, he, he wants to hurt you, but he wants you to please him. He wants to do something unusual in your life. He wants to give you a standing 
where your forefathers has never stood he wants to say something to join your life to the scripture he wants to take you to the land you never expect I won't say more than this let everybody go and encounter the Holy Spirit I don't want you to come asking foolish questions. I just share my revelation with you. But you have a choice to go with what is in your mind. And those who will listen, bring a gift to the house of God that can be pointed to. Don't ask whether we are going to place your gift on the wall. You don't need that. There are people who gave us cars in this house that we sent for dealers. And they picked the cars immediately to go and sell. Because at that time, we needed money, not car. So you are not going to tell us how to use it. But you are going to do it in obedience to the word of God. I remember one year like that, that God commanded for Isaac offering. It was glorious. Eternal Father, I've delivered the word you sent. I pray what this woman enjoy, every one of us will enjoy it. You will rebuke our adversary for us permanently. You will stop murmuring over our case permanently. In the mighty name of Jesus. You told them to leave her alone. Evil will leave us alone. You gave that woman great inheritance, air on earth, and eternity. You will do much more for us. According to your power that work in us, throughout our days, we shall see the goodness of the Lord. Now from that point, the life of that woman turned around. She was the first person that got the revelation of the risen Christ. <laughs> In a world of gender biases and prejudices, the power of the world could not hold Mary Magdalene back. He was the first at the tomb. And it's written in heaven and on earth. As a result of that gift. Hear me. Anywhere you stand. As far as the Lord is concerned. You will be the first to be attended to. The first richest in your family. The first complete man. Complete husband, complete minister of God, complete brother in Christ. The Bible says we are complete in Him. That power of completeness will fall upon us and go with us. It is so in Jesus' name. My Father, once again, I thank you for today. I glorify your name. I bless your people including myself, that this week shall be a unique week of blessing. A unique week of praising God. The tap of blessing that have been closed, I declare them open this week. By the blood of Jesus, every evil door open to anyone, any family, I command it to be shut permanently. This week, ah, 
unsolicited assistance. Good news. Keys of the kingdom shall become visible in our lives. Nobody will murmur as a result of lack. For God shall be our sufficiency. Our children will do well. And we shall enjoy peace. Let all our adversaries receive judgment. Let them pursue us no more. And let the name of the Lord forever be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.